Paw on the Heart, a broadcast about animals which have homes and those which are still looking for them. This time we've got a special treat for you, a trip to Cyprus. Keep on watching. What types of cats are Aphrodite cats? And are they becoming a recognized breed of cat for Cyprus and the world? What kind of sanctuary do donkeys have? How do dogs from the pound travel to their new homes by private airplane in Cyprus? Why is there a cat restaurant in a five-star hotel? The small island of Cyprus has been known since ancient times as the birthplace of Aphrodite. According to legend, it was specifically at this cliff that the ancient Greek goddess of beauty and love emerged from the sea and stepped ashore. The myth about Aphrodite's birth was a sensation in the ancient world. In 2004, however, another sensational bit of news appeared in Cyprus. Archaeologists who were working at a site called Shiliuro Kambos found a grave in which there were the remains of a human being and a cat. The mummified cat was wearing a leash, which showed that it was a beloved pet. The most exciting thing, however, was that the cat was around 9,500 years old. It had been thought that the ancient Egyptians were the first people on Earth to tame cats, but now it turned out that Cypriots had been doing so 4,000 years earlier. How are the successors of this, the world's oldest house pet, doing in Cyprus today? They are uh, very uh, fond of pets. They love pets. But there are also the people that they don't give attention. We have purebred cats roaming around, and we have angoras, Turkish angoras. We have vans. We have the Aphrodite, which is our national breed, going for recognition now. We even have Siberians, and we even have, have some Orientals. Cyprus is a sunny island with no real winter, and cats breed all year long. This is a problem in Cyprus, and steps have been taken in recent years to deal with it. There are many feeding sites on the island, and a program of sterilization has been launched. Colonies of cats are found in the most unimaginable places, even in historical monuments that are of global importance. One example, the cemetery of St. Constantine and St. Helen. It's a unique place, it's the oldest cemetery in town of Nicosia, and the cats have been starting gathering there since 15 years ago. This colony's future won't last for long because of you, as you have seen, they are almost neutered and spayed. Another colony of cats lives in an even more important historical monument in Cyprus, the Hala Sultan Teke Mosque. Scholars argue over whether this is the third or fourth most holy site for Muslims. According to legend, a woman who breastfed the Prophet Muhammad is buried here. The mosque offers a look at the biggest and best colony of Aphrodite cats. They developed a special look, a special coat, a special appearance, a special personality even, um, which makes them very, very different from all cats that, that exist in the cat fancy, in the cat world. Teresa Litterland, too, couldn't understand the first Aphrodite cat which she saw in Cyprus. It seemed to be similar to an Angora cat, but it did not satisfy the relevant standards. Before moving to the island, Teresa spent 20 years in England breeding Turkish van cats. Now she has the largest cattery for Aphrodite cats. I prefer the Cyprus cat because um, they've caught the they're very active, but they've got a calmer temperament on the whole. Teresa has a male Aphrodite cat, Cassidy, and he is the first registered cat of that kind. Cassidy was the starting point for a cat breeding and rescue program in Cyprus. He has a long face, triangular face, with high set ears. When you look at him in the profile, it's almost straight with a slight dip on the profile, plus he has a very strong chin and very big teeth. Even though he is a semi-feral cat, he was found in nature, he's perfectly tame and perfectly sweet with me and with everybody. Teresa also owns a cat called Jacob, and he is a fourth generation Aphrodite cat and a big star. 
The cat is four years old, has blue eyes, and is not deaf. White Aphrodite cats do not tend to be deaf because they would never survive out in nature if they could not hear. They weigh between 6 and 13 kilograms, which is the approximate weight of the largest breed of cats, the Maine Coon cats. And most of the pedigrees that we have now for his phenomenous size and his unbelievable coat. Incidentally, the soft and fluffy coat of the cats helps them to survive the winter, but for centuries the hair has been shorn and turned into thread. Older Cypriot women traditionally knit warm jumpers for their grandchildren from cat wool. An American genetics professor has just conducted analysis to find that the cats of Cyprus are a separate Mediterranean population and could be developed as an individual breed. Defenders of Aphrodite cats hope that this year the breed will receive official recognition from the world's leading cat breeding organizations. We are in the last phase of the procedure. So the recording of the breeds was, of, of the cats was done, the standard of points was written. Um, we had preliminary cat shows. As a judge, Andreas believes that there are sufficient numbers of cat breeds already, but he does love the Aphrodite cats and represents the opinion that the possible descendants of the oldest witness of a pet cat should get recognition. I would wish that these treasures we have for thousands of years would enter the breed complex and would get a chance to be protected like that. The original mother of Aphrodite cats at the cat breeding facility of Lynn Nyland is called Missy. She was found as a kitten which appeared to be in terrible shape and was missing one leg. Still, Missy became a wonderful mother to two sets of kittens. Lynn is afraid that the cats of Cyprus are dying out and are being destroyed. They are a beautiful cat. They are unique to this island. They um, don't appear anywhere else in the world. And if we lose them, we'll never get them back. So it's really important that we um, promote the breed and hopefully get some protection for them in the future. The government of Cyprus may adopt a law on protecting Aphrodite cats. A similar law has already been passed in relation to mouflons in Cyprus, wild mountain sheep about which Cypriots are very proud. All that remains is to recognize the Aphrodite cat, the first known tamed cat, as a treasure for the nation and for all of humanity. Cats are a bigger problem than dogs in Cyprus in terms of numbers, but they do better in the wild. It is thought that there are some 50,000 homeless dogs in Cyprus, but there are only six or seven shelters which can handle no more than 1,000 animals or so. Paw on the Heart visited the Julia shelter, which is run by a German woman, Barbara Balberg. She arrived in Cyprus 16 years ago and worked for a transportation and cargo company. She laughs in saying that that was an animal-free zone, but she inherited a great love of dogs from her parents. She started to rescue street dogs and to volunteer for shelters. And then, three years ago, she ended up here. All the shelters work nearly 100% just with donations. Local residents traditionally don't spend money on animals, and the government doesn't either. So foreigners are those who do most of the work in this regard in Cyprus. This private shelter was named after a Cypriot woman called Julia, who for the past 30 years has donated money and collected donations for the shelter. Many of the donations come from Germany. The running cost of such a place is an average every month 5,000 euros. Some 100 dogs usually live at the shelter. There are veterans which have lived here for 10 years. Sophocles is one example. The youngest dogs here are five wonderful beagle puppies which are nearly three months old. Their mother, Lisa, was found wandering around a field when she was already pregnant. The puppies cause much concern at the shelter. They must always be watched and protected against disease, and a lot of time has to be spent with them so as to ensure their socialization. She is a very good mother from the beginning, but she's also happy if people take the kids off her. 
A home in Germany has already been found for Lisa and two of the puppies. The shelter doesn't want to leave the other puppies in Cyprus because hunters are interested in them. Local hunters usually keep 10 or 20 dogs and house them in cages which are too narrow. A dog that is no longer of use to the hunter is simply abandoned. Sometimes hunters also get rid of dogs when the hunting season ends. There is a whole series of former hunting dogs at the shelter. Often they are simply tossed across the shelter's fence. Who is throwing such a beautiful dog over? This is a cute. I do this many years now, but I will never understand. The shelter is up in the mountains and it is inaccessible during powerful rainstorms because the roads are simply washed away. That, however, has not kept thieves from appearing. They have stolen hunting dogs and even a generator. I have a lot of plans with this place. Uh, my goal is to bring it up every year a little bit. Zoo psychologists visit the shelter from Germany a few times a year to train employees on how to deal with problems with the dog's psyche. Many dogs are initially quite afraid. It sometimes takes months for them to learn once again to trust people. I must say we are very lucky with these Cyprus dogs. 98% uh, of these dogs are just nice. Not very often really aggressive dogs. I don't know, Cyprus dogs are special. <laughs> Another problem in Cyprus is the understanding which people in the southern part of Europe have about raising dogs. In terms of responsibility, they differ from Northern Europeans who see a dog as a family member. During the 16 years that Barbara has spent in Cyprus, she has seen improvements in the situation. I think it will take another two generations until the way of thinking is maybe like we have it in North Europe. Last year, the shelter found a new home for more than 30 dogs, but two times as many animals arrived at the shelter. It wasn't the best year for the shelter because of the economic crisis. Many Europeans have left Cyprus and have left their dogs behind. The situation, however, is not hopeless, and the shelter's people are joyful about any dog that they can save after it has come close to death and then find it a home. And then you get the photos from Germany. where this, you, you remember how you found him. You, see how he gets better in the shelter and then you see him lying in a bed or on a sofa or running over green fields. This is, yeah, <laughs> this is our salary. We know it's worth to do it. It was Barbara's idea to find homes for dogs in Germany and she succeeded in doing so two years ago. Working with an association in Cyprus which works to adopt dogs and a similar organization in Germany she sends about 10 dogs a month to Germany. That would not be possible if a kind German businessman, Mr. Schuller, did not donate his private airplane for that purpose. Pa on the Heart was fortunate enough to be present for one of these touching events. Just watch. I'm Barbara, this is Mara, and this is Lisa, and you are watching Japa Ursitz. For many centuries, the animal that was nearly the most important creature was the donkey. In Cyprus, donkeys doing work have never had an easy life, but today there is a modern shelter for the animals in Cyprus, with some 120 donkeys living there at this time. Here at the Donkey Sanctuary Cyprus, we look after elderly, unwanted and sick donkeys. Most of these donkeys are ex-working donkeys, mainly in the villages up in the mountains where they'll still use them to collect olives, grapes, firewood, and to maybe carry things around the village. Many of the donkeys have damaged backs because they were once required to carry too much weight. They suffer no pain at the shelter, however. Every day, some 20 donkeys receive anti-infection medications and painkillers. Pepe is a genet which came here when she was no longer needed by her owner. She is blind and has a scar on her forehead. She actually does wear sometimes, like amateur boxers, she wears a padded helmet on her head so that if she bangs into anything, she doesn't cut herself. 
It cannot be said that donkeys in Cyprus face worse living conditions than is the case elsewhere in the world, including England and other countries in Europe. Donkeys are the friends of Cypriots, but the fact is that merciless attitudes toward these animals can be found everywhere. There was a man who wanted to buy Jani 15 years ago, but he thought that the price was too high. Jani was put to work for five years, and then he arrived here. He is the most lovable of all of the donkeys. One human year is equal to three donkey years. 70% of the donkeys at the shelter are around 20 years old, which means that they are old age pensioners. This means that they need good veterinary care, regular examinations, vaccines, and also care for their teeth, which continue to grow throughout the lives of donkeys. The shelter conducted a survey to find that there were 2,600 donkeys in southern Cyprus in 2003, but six years later, their number had declined by 800. In the future, I think it is only going to get less and less. It would be too bad if these traditional animals disappeared from the everyday rural life of Cyprus. Donkeys are traditionally spiteful animals, and that has become something of a saying. Richard encountered this when he arrived here five years ago to work as a horse tender. He had never worked with donkeys. Come on. Don't you dare kick me. I haven't been kicked for a while. Come on. Good boy. Go on. Good boy. Go on. When I first came, I took a little donkey for a walk. I thought, I'm a big, strong man. <coughs> this donkey will go where I wanted it to go. The donkey said, no, no, I'm going that way. And he dragged me down the concrete. And I had scrapes all down my legs. Um, they're very strong. If they want to go somewhere, they'll go somewhere. My name is Richard. This is Lonnie. And you're watching Kappa Uz Sits. At the airport, Paw on the Heart stood witness to a happy story. Eleven rescued dogs were on their way to new homes in Germany. They were seen by a vet, were cleaned up, and received all of the necessary documents for their trip. The dogs need the normal European passport with the injections. Three hours later, they will be in Hamburg, where their new owners will pick them up at the airport new families are even crying when the dogs are coming out of the plane. The new owners have only seen the dogs on the internet. In Germany, they had to undergo a serious adoption inspection. Specialists visited their homes and concluded agreements to say that they would be informed if there were any problems with the dog. In the highest demand are so-called Cypriot poodles and other small dogs. In recent times, however, there have also been huskies in Cyprus, and they certainly should not be there. Spook was found outdoors three months ago, very weak and full of lice and fleas. Shibu, in turn, was left behind by a European woman who was leaving Cyprus. Another departing family abandoned two bitches. A home was found for one in Germany in the past, but Angela is taking off today. What's more, she will be accepted by the same people who adopted her sister. So these two dogs will be reunited again tonight in Hamburg. So these are things where you have tears in your eyes. Well, here comes Mr. Scholler now. It's my huskies. He owns a shipping company in Cyprus and he often takes his private plane on trips to and from Germany. Two years ago, he supported Barbara's idea of delivering adopted dogs to Germany on these flights. Mr. Schuller was surprised about these passengers. He loads the animals into the airport car himself. He always does so, and he doesn't think that it is anything unusual. Well, someone has to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schuller says that he prefers Labradors and German sheepdogs, but in fact, he likes all kinds of dogs. There's not a, a very special kind. I mean, they're all nice, they're all good. No, they're always friendly. They're always happy when you come, and they're always happy when you're with them. The businessman has a firm with millions in revenues, and he is proud of the fact that he can provide dogs with at least a little bit of comfort. We normally uh, have a passenger from our company, and they're obliged to take care of the dogs. And during the flight, I go back as well for a short moment and 
see that they're comfortable. It's only for a few hundred meters. He has to stay like this, huh? It is time for Barbara to say goodbye to her beloved spook. She does say that such moments have become rather routine, but this husky is a true heartbreaker. Perhaps she will meet the dog again when she visits Germany. Not all Cypriot dogs find fortune abroad. Some are adopted here. The British family of Teresa and Walter Litterland welcomed Paw on the Heart with much hospitality. They retired several years ago and moved from England to Cyprus. Teresa grew up on a farm in Africa where her parents bred goats, Siamese cats, and local Ridgeback dogs. Walter, for his part, always had mutts as pets. Today, the couple fill up eight bowls of dog food each day, all for Cypriot dogs which found their way to the couple's home. In the old setting. The animals indeed found us. We, we didn't go and look for them, they came to us. Um, our first dog, which was Purdy, which is uh, a hunting dog, was abandoned on the road by the hunters and he was in and out of the rubbish bins looking for food. Purdy is now the boss of the dogs because he was the first one to live with the family. All of the dogs get along very well and have never had any serious fights. Of course, sometimes each of them tries to be the boss, even Rio. This one was originally called Romeo. And I would not go out and shout, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? And so we changed it to Rio. Rio came here from a shelter and got ill. He was paralyzed from his neck down. Cypriot doctors could not find out what the problem was. Rio traveled to Germany on Mr. Schuller's plane, and there it was discovered that the serious disease was based on an infected mosquito bite. It took a lot of effort to treat Rio, and he will never again be able to hop onto or get off of the sofa himself. He still walks a little bit funny, but he smiles a lot, and he knows he's been very, very lucky. The other dogs know his special needs, and they, they do tend to look after him. Walter rescued Dougal nearly a year ago. The dog was living among cats in the wild. People had beaten the dog, and he had scars on his legs which showed that someone poked him with a hot iron. Dougal was found a home in Finland, but he did not like it. Walter flew to Finland to bring him back. He will never leave here again. We can't put him through that again. Brandy's brother, Whiskey, found a lovely home in England. The two brothers were tossed over the fence three years ago. Because Brandy has a long snout and short legs, he is lovingly called a crocodile. This loving animal is Princess Mitzi. She was found outside a pet shop when it was 40 degrees outside, and she had no water. Cassidy was the first cat to come to the home. Teresa already had four pedigreed cats from England, and they did not want to accept a new cat in the house. Cassidy arrived at Christmas after being shot and poisoned. So we decided to get him to the vet and decided that he was going to stay here. He decided he was going to stay here. The house is just right for animals. A secure fence around the yard so that the dogs can romp. The cats have their own room where no one disturbs them and their kittens are safe. Yeah, the babies are usually born in a bedroom. <laughs> All that is needed in this animal-friendly house is to make sure that the dogs and cats are friends. Usually they get along well, though the dogs do love to chase the cats around. The biggest thing that we have to organize is making sure that doors and windows are closed at the right time. Of course, adopted dogs might have their behavioral problems. What I find, particularly with the dogs, if they um, have been mistreated, um, they often have some sort of issue then it is necessary to adapt to the dog and try to deal with the cause of its stress. On the whole, they are very healthy. Oh, 
well balanced. And well balanced, as you say, and, and extremely loving. Teresa and Walter cannot imagine life without these animals. They say that the animals touch the most emotional strings of their heart. I am talking to you now and I have tears in my eyes. Anything happens to them, we're very, very concerned. Very upset. I am Walter. I'm Teresa. These are our very dear friends and you're watching Capo Sit. Many of the homeless cats can be found around hotels in Cyprus where they find lots of food. That is a big problem for a tourist country. During the quiet season, cats are poisoned in so-called cleaning actions if there are too many. The Five Star Columbia Hotel did not want to do so, and it asked the advice of World Cat Federation cat expert Andreas Mobius. With his help, the Columbia Cat Care Project was established. The better thing is to neuter the cats and to install the system that the cats can form a group to defend the territory, which is just a brilliant idea and it works very well in the hotel where we installed it. What is this experimental project and does it work as intended? We constructed cat restaurants that they will get their food. We did clicker training with them and we installed in the restaurants ultrasound machines emitting ultrasound that we can't hear but it makes the restaurants very uncomfortable for the cats and we were planting so-called piss-off plants. It is an etheric oil plant which has almost no smell, no odor for us but it is terrible for the cats. Twice a day waitress and cat woman Annie walks around the grounds of the hotel clicking a clicker and leaving food at three cat feeding facilities oh. or restaurants. This is the system which we learn them, but they learn for one, two days. And when I click, they know that this is the time for feeding and they come from everywhere where they are. Usually we feed them with uh, some amount of dry food, some amount of uh, cane food and some rice. According to the project plan, only those cats which have an implanted microchip can get at the food. There's an electronic door to the cat restaurant which admits those cats which have the chip. I never use it because the most of the cats, they don't get inside. Most of these cats, they're scared from closed doors. It turned out that the cats were too wild, but the training process continues. It took time for Annie to win their trust and she is the main person in the animals' lives. She is a Bulgarian who joined the staff at the hotel eight years ago. It's working right now, and this should work on uh, six meters uh, range. Over the course of three years, Annie has come to know each of the hotel's cats, and that allows her to spot illegal intruders. It's not uh, up to this like three years ago when you had like 20 cats in a taverna and the waiters were trying to walk their ways around and not uh, falling uh, over them. There are also signs in hotel rooms asking people not to feed the cats. Annie even put a collar with a bell on Duke. It's a uh, writing do not feed on the collar because he usually go to bother the guests. What do the guests of a five-star hotel have to say about all of this? I've never seen cats looked after and in such good condition in and around a hotel before. Some people will love it, and personally I do. I can see some people might find it a little off-putting if they don't particularly like animals. But as I say, the, the cats seem to know where they're not supposed to go and you can clap your hands or shoo them and they'll go away. So I don't think anyone will find it a problem. I think more people will like it, actually. There were some 20 sponsors among the guests, godparents to cats who donate money. Several cats have been adopted by guests and the hotel's employees. The hotel feels that in general terms, the project has been successful and that the problem with cats has all but been resolved. It's definitely uh, a more human and uh, environmentally friendly natural pest control. Basically, by keeping them around, you have definitely the advantage that, as say, 
70-80% of guests, at least of our guests, uh, really appreciate it. The organizer of the pilot project, in turn, hopes that this system might be introduced at other hotels in Cyprus or abroad. It is not that expensive as you might think, but it works out very, very well and it might save a lot of cats in the world from being tortured or killed. Hello, my name is Andreas Möbius and I'm a World Cat Federation cat expert and you're watching Chapa Usirts. Perhaps the experience with the cat project in Cyprus could also be adapted to the needs of other countries. If people want to help animals and do good deeds, then their location is not important. All that's needed is an idea and goodwill. Paw on the Heart will continue to look for new stories in other countries too, until we meet again. Oh, <laughs>